Did you know that My Hero Academia swept the Crunchyroll Anime Awards last year? Out of 17 categories, it was nominated in 8 and it won 7. It's like the La La Land of anime. Except, you know, it's actually good. And it's not a poorly written, poorly composed, poorly sung musical with tired themes that pander to the egoism of Hollywood. Whew, uh, sorry, I uh, really let myself get carried away there. Let's talk about anime. <laughs> Internet, welcome to Film Theory, the show that's dedicated to ruining your favorite superheroes one by one. So far, we've killed off Luke Cage, Deadpool, Spider-Man, Magneto, and Wolverine. We've taken away Doctor Strange's magic. We've wrecked Thor's self-esteem. We've exposed Batman and Wonder Woman for the failures that they are. We've proved that Ant-Man and Superman would destroy the world. We pitted the Incredibles against each other. And just last month, I showed you how Black Panther's biggest weakness was the law of supply and demand. But to Today, instead of just looking at more Marvel and DC superheroes, we're instead turning our eyes eastward to tackle the insanely popular anime My Hero Academia, where superheroes aren't masked vigilantes with secret identities, but instead government-sanctioned professionals who work full-time saving lives while employed by various hero agencies. And it's not just the heroes who have the superpowers here. 80% of the population has some sort of unique power called a quirk. Reports of people with superpowers popped up across the globe. For long? the supernatural became the totally normal. Quirks range from mostly useless physical deformities to insane supernatural abilities like converting body fat into synthetic matter, sweating nitroglycerin, shooting laser beams out of your belly button, or tape out of your elbows. No joke, those are both uh, real superpowers in this series. Overall, there are any number of interesting quirks to explore throughout this series, but today I want to look a bit closer at the show's most important hero, All Might, the world's symbol of peace and number one most powerful superhero. Now, being so highly ranked would lead you to assume that All Might was born with the most amazing quirk of all time. But that actually couldn't be further from the truth. His quirk, named One For All, was actually given to him. In a world where practically everyone is born with a superpower, All Might just wasn't. Before being given the One For All power, he had no quirk. I was quirkless too as a kid. In fact, All Might was the eighth person to receive the One For All trait, and the story of My Hero Academia is all about him passing it on to its ninth user, the series protagonist Deku, another person born without a quirk just like All Might himself. I deem you worthy of my power. My quirk is yours to inherit. This is all well and good, the characters are all super lovable, the story is super compelling, except for one thing. It's my theory that All Might was born with a quirk. If you look at the series lore and the way the One For All quirk behaves, All Might possesses a latent quirk beyond just One For All that maybe even he was never aware of. And I'm about to lay down that evidence for you. After all, as they say on the show, Meddling when you don't need to is the essence of being a hero. That must mean I'm a hero then, right? Maybe my quirk is the incredible ability to jump. To conclusions! To begin, we need to look a bit closer at the range of quirks present in this universe. You see, the My Hero quirks fall into one of three broad category types. Transformation, Mutant, and Emitter. Transformation type quirks, as the name implies, transform or change the form of the user's body in some way, or adds a new feature to the user's body for a limited amount of time. For example, one transformation quirk gives the user the power to harden any part of their body, thereby increasing its resistance and defensive capabilities. Another, possessed by the character Mount Lady is able to transform into a giant version of herself. Pretty self-explanatory. Moving on. Mutant-type quirks, unlike transformations, are permanent changes to the user's physiology. These are quirks like Froppy's frog form, Ojiro's tail, and Toru's invisibility. These quirks can't be turned off. And then finally, there's the emitter-type quirks, which are pretty much everything else. They're defined as being activation-based, so they can be turned on and off, and unlike the other two categories, emitter quirks don't actually alter the user's appearance. Instead, the users just able to generate substances or change certain materials around them at will. This includes everything from emitting an aroma that puts people to sleep to emitting
emitting sweat that happens to explode. More unusual examples of emitter quirks belong to Shota Izawa, who can cancel the quirks of others just by looking at them, and Hitoshi Shinso, who can brainwash anyone who answers one of his questions, thereby forcing them to do what he says. And between those three classifications, that encompasses all known quirks in this universe. Equipped with that knowledge, now let's examine All Might's quirk, One For All. Even though it's technically one quirk, One For All is actually a combination of two very separate powers. First, a quirk that stockpiles power, much like a battery storing energy, and second, a quirk that can be passed on to others, just like the passing of a torch. As a result of this odd combination of powers, One For All makes each new person to inherit it stronger than the last. One person improves the power, then hands it off to another person. It continues to grow as it's passed along. It's how All Might, user number 8, is able to be the uncontested greatest hero in the world, and how Deku, All Might's successor, presumably rises to that exact same status, hence the story of My Hero Academia. This is the story of how I became the world's greatest hero. But here's where things start to get suspicious. This is All Might's body when he's not using the quirk. And this is his body when he is using the quirk. Now, based on these images, you would think that One For All would be classified as a transformation-style quirk, right? All Might's body is clearly undergoing a huge transformation every time he activates the power, growing in size and muscle mass by, like, a hundredfold. But it's not. The manga very explicitly classifies it as an emitter-style quirk, which, again, we just reviewed and are defined by not altering the user's appearance. Now, that might seem like it's a really minor distinction, a really small nit to pick as to how this quirk works, but then look at this. When Deku uses One For All, his body doesn't change. He remains the lean, scrawny kid that we've seen throughout the series. And before you ask, no, that's not just because he's only using 5% of One For All's power. In the manga, even when Deku pushes his power output over 20%, we still don't see any signs of Deku's muscles growing at all. And this is a very minor spoiler for the manga, so if you don't want to be spoiled, just skip ahead a few seconds. But shortly beyond where we've seen in the show, Deku is able to temporarily use 100% and even an incredible 1 million percent of One For All's power, and yet his body still remains the same. It's also worth noting that All Might's size doesn't equate to his strength. Again, mild spoilers ahead, but in chapter 95 of the manga, we see what happens when All Might gives up One For All. He has a few embers of his former power left, but they get used up. He specifically says early on in the chapter, the embers inside me have vanished. Later, he talks more about it to Deku. The embers of one for all inside me are gone, and what's more, I can't maintain my muscle form anymore. Now, this tells us two interesting things. First, the way this is phrased implies that his muscle form and one for all are two different things. One for all is gone, but also, I can't maintain my muscle form anymore. We also see him briefly transform into muscle form in these panels, only to revert immediately back. But again, if One For All were his only quirk, and the embers were truly burned out like he says earlier in the chapter, well then he shouldn't be able to do that transformation at all. All of this would seem to suggest that All Might wasn't born quirkless, that he possessed some sort of transformation ability before he inherited One For All. If you need more proof, just look at how Gran Torino, All Might's trainer, describes his early days with the hero. He was pretty much able to use One For All right off the bat. Of course, he had the body going for him, so there's that. The scene then cuts to a young All Might getting trained, and his body looks no different than Deku's. He's still relatively skinny. He's not super buff. And that's not all. While discussing Deku's strength training, All Might even says to him offhandedly that for some reason he was able to access 100% of One For All's power as soon as he inherited it. That's a weirdly specific detail to include, isn't it? That means that there has to be something that set All Might apart from Deku and allowed him to handle all that excess energy when Deku can't, despite both both of them supposedly starting off quirkless. So what would be so special and significantly different about All Might's body that would enable him to use powers right away without a quirk that would differentiate him from Deku? It's hard to imagine an actual explanation here. All of it seems to point to All Might having some sort of hidden quirk before he actually inherited One For All. And it's not like latent, undiscovered quirks are unheard of in this universe. In fact, the very origin of One For All exists in an undiscovered, almost vestigial quirk. One For All was originally created by a villain named All For One. And if you think that gets confusing, it does. All For One's quirk allowed him to transfer quirks between other people. Now, All For One's brother was seemingly born quirkless, 
so All for One gave his brother a quirk that allowed him to store up power. However, unknown to All for One, his brother actually did have a quirk, one that allowed him to pass his quirks on to other people. It would have been totally useless on its own, but with the new quirk that was added by his brother, those two quirks combined to create One for All. This evil man had a quirkless younger brother, even though everyone thought he was quirkless. Turns out the brother did have a quirk. He had a useless power that only allowed him to pass on quirks. And so the stockpiling ability merged with the younger brother's power. And that is how One for All came to be. So it's already canon that there can be latent or hidden quirks in people, so why not All Might? Here's the thing, when you look at how it operates, One for All isn't about muscle strength. Sure, Deku needs to strengthen up for 10 months so inheriting the quirk doesn't destroy his limbs. An unprepared body can't fully inherit it. Your arms and legs would shoot off if you tried to. Which, in and of itself, is a bit weird to begin with, right? If All Might were indeed quirkless to begin with, and then received the power and could suddenly use one for all from the get-go, wouldn't he just be under the impression that Deku could handle it as well? Anyway, the actual power of one for all isn't mechanical power coming from muscles. It actually works by storing up metabolic energy, converting it to kinetic energy, and then channeling that energy through the body. It's pretty easy to see this in action. In episode 2, we see All Might punch so hard that it changes the weather. Pure super strength isn't gonna do that. You also see it in Deku. When Deku uses One for All, we see the air around him crackling with green energy. That's not just for show, that's the excess energy of his quirk overflowing from his body. The same doesn't happen to All Might because his biceps are actually beefy enough to contain all of it inside of him, which seems to indicate that perhaps All Might's latent transformation quirk is to expand his muscles without really increasing his overall strength. It's a seemingly useless quirk unless he inherits it's something that requires his body to store huge amounts of energy, just like the creation of One for All to begin with, a useless quirk on its own that becomes super powerful when combined with exactly the right complementary quirk. But lastly, think about this. Before All Might passed the quirk on to Deku, the only goal of One for All users passing on their power was to eventually create a superhero capable of taking down All for One, that insanely powerful evil brother who literally had access to all the superpowers in the world. Now, with that as a pretty important goal, would anyone in their right mind entrust that power to someone with no quirk of their own, and thus no power of their own? If you're looking to keep hope alive that you'll defeat the world's strongest supervillain, that just wouldn't make any sense. No, the far more likely scenario is that All Might was chosen for his quirk, a quirk that enabled him to be a bigger, more powerful battery, someone that was perfectly suited to use the power of One for All. Before inheriting One for for all, All Might believed that he had no quirk. He said as much to Deku, who found it hugely inspirational to hear that his hero also started out as a weak, powerless, quirkless person. But for as inspiring as a story as that is, it's still just a story. If you actually stop and look at the classification of the quirk, how it behaves, and even the motivations of the heroes passing one for all on, All Might must have had a quirk before inheriting it from his predecessor. At best, he wasn't aware of it until he acquired one for all. At worst, he outright lied to Deku in an effort to push his apprentice to new and even more impressive heights. Or who knows, maybe season 3 will prove me completely wrong. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And speaking of season 3, it's going on right now. And who doesn't love watching the creators of a series decimate my theories in real time? But MatPat, it's only airing in Japan, and I can't speak Japanese. All those new All Might memes that are going to be circulating on Twitter are going to pass me by. Oh no, my friends, you too can watch season 3, eat away at my theory, and be hip with all the new memes as they're happening live with Verve. That's right, all three seasons of My Hero Academia are available subbed, if you're a purist, or dubbed, if you hate reading, right now on Verve, with each new episode of season 3 going up every Saturday starting, well, this past Saturday. So don't wait, if you're not on Verve already, you're already falling behind the season. For a limited time, theorists just like you watching right Right now can get a 30-day free trial of Verve Premium, which gives you ad-free access to 
13 channels, including Crunchyroll, Rooster Teeth, Funimation, and Cartoon Hangover by going to verve.co slash matpat. Link is down below in the description. And like you heard, with both Crunchyroll and Funimation in the Verve family, Verve is going to be your go-to place for all the must-watch anime, including Cowboy Bebop, which just celebrated its 20-year anniversary a few days ago. Now, if you haven't seen Cowboy Bebop, it's actually one of my first ever introductions to anime. It is a must-watch for a reason. This is one of the anime that all all other anime are built upon. Or if you're interested in something a bit newer, Verve also just got the first 53 episodes of Dragon Ball Super dubbed. So as a pleb who admittedly enjoys watching the dubs more than the subs, I'm finally gonna get my chance to catch up on all that Goku Black business. Because, you know, apparently you can never have enough Goku. Unless, of course, you're talking about Dragon Ball GT, but, you know, we don't talk about Dragon Ball GT. Plus, best of all, Verve allows you to download episodes to your mobile device so you can watch it all without an internet connection. Which, I gotta say, has been a big reason why I was able to do this theory on My Hero Academia today. Binging MHA on a plane over to VidCon Europe was a godsend. 14 hours of travel fly by when you're watching a guy with exploding sweat duke it out against a guy who breaks his fingers like every other episode. So anyway, save your data, catch up on some awesome anime, and even find some new shows that you'll love on some of the other Verve channels. Try it all out for the next 30 days with Verve Premium at verve.co slash matpat. Use those quirky awesome engine legs to rush down into the description and click that link. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to actually go download some more anime because I have another long plane ride that I've got tonight. There's been way too much travel in the first couple months of this year, but uh, it's finally starting to end, so hopefully I'll be at home for a while getting able to do some GT Lives, but uh, holy jeez, there's been a lot of travel. It's gotten me caught up on a lot of anime. You can do it too! Click the link!